Hey all, Alex from Music Hub here, and today we'll be doing a review of the 1836 novel by Charles Dickens, The Posthumous Papers of the Pickwick Club, otherwise known as The Pickwick Papers. Charles John Huffham Dickens, born the 7th of February 1812 in Portsmouth, England, died the 9th of June 1870 in Higham, Kent. Perhaps the most famous English writer not named Shakespeare, Dickens needs little introduction, and we're going to be talking about a lot of his works on this channel, perhaps all of them at some point. To just summarize Dickens' early life for now, uh, he was born into relative comfort, but after his father was sent to debtor's prison in 1824, Dickens worked at a boot-blacking warehouse for minimal wages. Keep in mind he was just an adolescent when he was working there, too. After a few years, Dickens found work first as a law clerk, then as a journalist, and he developed an interest in the arts, just in general, specifically theater and literature. His journalistic sketches would eventually be compiled into a collection called Sketches by Boz, which contains both non-fictional accounts and some fictional character studies. The latter would steer him towards a more elaborate fictional account of English life, which turned into, well, the Pickwick Papers. This book was published in serial form over the span of almost two years, with three or four chapters being released at a time. And as can be the case with serial publications, the structure of the book is extremely episodic. There are several consistent characters, but kind of the most central one of the bunch is the titular Samuel Pickwick, who runs this club of gentlemen that essentially go out of their way to meet eccentric personalities in and around London. The result is a sprawling mess of stories, larks, and adventures that don't always fit neatly together. Uh, you'll have plot points that will go on for several chapters and then sort of just fall to the wayside. That said, I don't want to describe this as a book completely sans narrative either. There are plot points that build on each other, and it does all lead to a conclusion of some sort. It is all very divergent, though, and it's easy to see why plenty of people struggle getting into this one as opposed to other Dickens novels. But the strengths of the Pickwick Papers are in its characters and in the way Dickens writes about them. Even in his mid-twenties, you can tell he's a keen observer of people, and he really knows how to translate personality into a fictional character. Like, I would bet that most of these side characters are exaggerations of people in his own life who he met. He describes them all so vividly, even the central character of Pickwick, who doesn't have to be all that interesting, because he's mostly just the person who things happen to, rather than the kind of uh, central plot driver. Um, Pickwick has a distinct stubbornness to him that is really fun to experience. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Sam Weller, Pickwick's right-hand man and personal assistant who is lower class, speaks with a Cockney accent, and has an outrageous wit that you can't ever tell if it's just due to his lack of education or if he really is being a smart-ass intentionally. I tend to think that it's more of the latter. Sam's character was easily the most popular aspect of the book at the time. It increased the book's sales by a factor of 10, and it made Dickens a household name in England before he had even written a second novel. All of these characters are caricatures, undoubtedly, but at least in this book, they don't seem like malicious caricatures. And this is the appeal of Dickens, which is so apparent from early on. He makes these lower-class, easy-to-ridicule figures very human, he humanizes them while still having his fun in the process. The wit of his sentences and how he presents awkward situations is really sharp. Not only does he have uh, strong one-liners, Sam especially gets a lot of those as you'll find out, but he paints the other characters' reactions to those one-liners, which makes it all twice as funny to me. It's a different type of humor from someone like Jane Austen. Hers is very subtle to the point where you might miss it if you blink too fast. But Dickens is very blunt and upfront, yet also clever in that bluntness as well. Both of these are very excellent approaches. To be clear, I'm not stating a personal preference. Having said all that, despite the humor and the characters, I would not say that this is a good starting place for someone new to Dickens. You'd want to go for a novel of his with a more focused narrative, I think, and this one just detours too much from the main point to really fit that bill. 
But for Dickens himself, in the context of his own life, he could hardly have dreamed of finding a better start to his career in the world of fiction. And there are quite a few elements of this that have aged very well in the nearly 200 years since its publication. And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Tell a friend as well. Thank you so much <laughs> for watching, and I'll see you next time right here on Music Hub. Charles John Huffam Diggins. Diggins? What the fuck, man?